Um, so now we are going to move on to Zscaler. And um, Tamao is going to actually join on this one too uh, for the end of it for a fireside chat as well. So we have Nitha Rathi and Josh Carlal joining us now. Take it away, hey, you guys. Hey, Thank hey, you all. Ethan, Josh, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Um, yes, so um, Nitha and Josh have a great presentation prepared, uh, and then I'll join at the end to guide a little bit of a fireside chat. So take it away. Awesome. Well, thank you for, for having us. Uh, looking forward to kind of telling a little bit of our story, a little bit of our journey, right, uh, with Flux at, at Zscaler. So um, as was mentioned, my name is Josh Carlisle, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm the principal architect uh, at Zscaler. Uh, Nita, do you want to say hi real quick? Yeah, and I am Nita. I'm a staff software engineer here at Zscaler, and we are super excited to talk about our journey and how we accomplish multi-tenancy with Flux CD. Awesome. So, so where to begin? So really kind of, you know, every journey really kind of starts uh, uh, somewhere, right? And, and for us, it, it really started with uh, the development of really a new SaaS security platform at Zscaler. So we actually had one of those really rare greenfield uh, opportunities, right? You only get a few of these in your career, right? Uh, uh, and so it goes without saying that we had a lot of decisions to make. Um, and some of those decisions were kind of unique to the SaaS space. Uh, especially when it comes to things like multi-tenancy, right? Uh, so, like like most modern apps today, right? The, the you know we are mostly aligned to a lot of the latest cloud native platforms, uh, including Kubernetes, uh, uh, to which we really kind of deploy a, a myriad of services uh, uh, deployed to our Kubernetes environments, um, and 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 we also have actually have platform services as well. So, uh, a lot of things like databases and messaging. Uh, and other platforms, the things that you would expect in a modern app, you know, the glue pieces, right, the glue pieces together, uh, that are also hosted on Kubernetes. And all, all of those together kind of make up one of our environments, something we call a stamp. Uh, but we also have really some additional complexity uh, uh, from uh, the multi-tenant side of the equation. Uh, because we actually have tenant-specific microservices as well, right? Uh, and, and it's one of the ways that we actually... Um, can right size uh, kind of some of our customer workloads and handle some of the common scenarios that you run in, in multi-tenant environments, things like noisy neighbor kind of scenarios. Uh, it's actually worth mentioning that uh, we lean into another CNCF project here, uh, something called CADA to kind of help us out in that regard. So I definitely go check that out. I'm not talking about CADA today, but it's worth mentioning. Uh, but the, the trade-off of all this power that we get now to be able to do uh, things that we need to do to uh, for, for our, our, our multi-tenant workloads, uh, the trade-off is complexity, right? And, and especially complexity uh, in our deployments, right? So all of our deployments, right, have multiple environments sometimes. Uh, uh, they, can, they can be shared on a single cluster, uh, like some of our pre-prod environments where we might have multiple dev environments. Uh, and and also in, in regards to our production deployments, right? So we have various uh, you know stamps uh, that are deployed to different geos around the world. Uh, uh, so in many ways, we kind of have a tenant, multi-tenant, a tenant of tenant scenario, right? So we have tenants in the standpoint of multiple environments, uh, and we also have multiple customer tenants within those tenants. So it goes without saying that we, we have some complexity, right, to deal with. Uh, and we started out a bit of our journey with a little bit of a homegrown solution, right? A lot of organizations do this. A little bit of a hybrid de deployment, right? The solution is a kind of a combination of, of Helm charts, uh, a little bit of GitOps actions. Uh, and in some cases, we were actually using the, you know, the Kubernetes API, you know, de deploying things through code, right? But we really knew that this wasn't going to be a long-term thing. It wouldn't be long-term viable. Uh, it wouldn't be as robust as we needed to be. We knew we'd be uh, have some probably some maintenance nightmares, right? We didn't want to build this uh, initially, right? So most of our experience um, on our team uh, uh, comes from traditional platforms, uh, uh, and uh, you know my background's Azure DevOps. We've got folks on different teams, you know, various teams that work with Jenkins and Bamboo and all the different stacks that, 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 that are common in these kind of conversations. Uh, uh, but we really kind of started asking ourselves a question. We've got this modern stack. <laughs> are there any approaches that would kind of give us a first-class experience uh, within Kubernetes? Uh, uh, and, and, 
interesting enough, we actually briefly, uh, we didn't quite learn our lesson uh, of building it ourselves, and we very actually briefly explored some more custom solutions targeted towards native on Kubernetes using things like custom controllers. Uh, and that's actually where Nita uh, became involved a little bit with the project and, 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 and had a good take on that effort. Uh, maybe, Nita, do you, you want to mention something about that real quick? Because yeah, yeah. I think it's interesting. Uh, yeah, right when, right when you think that you can write controllers, you realize there's so much more to it. Uh, you got to manage the CRD state drift, uh, graceful termination, event notification, just to name a few. So writing a matured controller takes time, experience, and the right skill set. And, and, and that's where like, you know, Flux comes in, Flux controllers handle all of that and the active community like Flux is where all your questions are answered with a really short turnaround, this amazing Slack channel, like, you know, with sometimes you even get valuable advice to your particular problem. Uh, that's when we started exploring Flux. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, we went, so part of this journey was a lot like other folks journey, right? We explored a lot of different options, right? We explored traditional options. We explored homegrown stuff. We explored more complex homegrown stuff as Nina mentioned. Uh, 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 but through that journey though, is all very useful because as we started, we started talking about, hey, these custom controllers, wait, there's, there's, there's platforms out here that have already taking care of this complexity. They're solving it in, in the same kind of way that we wanted to solve it. The, 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 this desired kind of state scenario was, was something that was really attractive to us, as opposed to the push model, right? The, and, and things can change afterwards, things can start, uh, things can start deviating, and, and we didn't want that, right? So as we started to explore uh, uh, Flux more, it really started to really check a lot of the boxes for us, uh, especially the multi-tenant support uh, that was really important to us. Uh, some of the uh, built-in native support for, 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 for Helm charts, something that we already kind of uh, had made an investment in and we weren't relishing the thought of telling of our, all of our engineers and all of our DevOps teams to completely move to something new. Uh, so it kind of allowed us to, to, to retain a lot of the, the work that we put into uh, some of the original efforts. Uh, but, but that's kind of really how our journey started. So kind of, you know, with that context, but you know what, I'm going to pass this over to Nita, Nita now, and, yep. and she can share a little bit about, our, you know, kind of where we landed and what yep. kind of our journey and what we learned along the way. Right. Yeah. So as you can see in this slide, like, you know, most of our workloads are Helm charts and, and they are getting deployed into a multi-tenant environment. And, and, and we, we were doing things off of, of a single repository, like in our deployment repository, uh, it had everything like, you know, it had definitions of environments. It had had uh, definitions for microservices, uh, uh, Helm charts, uh, infrastructure definitions, everything's off, off there. And, and what we had before Flux actually worked for us, but was it efficient and, and met the best practices for cloud native ecosystem? Probably not. And, and, and we were fine with it for, for, for a brief uh, amount of time because we were in this uh, fail fast mode. Uh, but, and, and, and we were in the process of moving our uh, Helm charts definitions closer to our uh, microservices. Uh, we were in the process of transitioning them, uh, pushing our Helm charts to, uh, to ECR. And, and, and when, when Flux came in, it, it all made a sense and it all made a very simple and, 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 and flexible for us. Uh, so what we have at the moment is um, uh, we have multiple repositories. Josh, if you want to take me to the next uh, slide. Yeah. So what we have is uh, uh, a microservices repository. Those individual repositories are still there. We didn't touch touch those. What we did is we added two additional repositories. One is the subsystems configuration repository. That's where we configure all our uh, microservices. Like that's where we have our Helm releases and Git repositories and so on and so forth. And we have the Flux cluster repository. That's where we have our um, uh, cluster definitions, our tenant definitions, all our infra, uh, everything's there. Um, what we are also using a Flux for is uh, uh, updating our image uh, tags. Uh, and we are also uh, configured it, obviously, to, to give us uh, notifications both on, on Slack and, and giving us a notification back to our GitHub repository to uh, what happened to that commit, whether that commit reconciled or it errored out, uh, 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 so on and so forth. Uh, our DevOps is monitoring the Slack uh, to see what's happening in the cluster. And additionally, we are also pulling some dashboards from Flux2 repository, and we have some our homegrown dashboards and that's how we are monitoring our cluster state. Uh, uh, and ideally, this is where we would like some uh, of our pain points being uh, taken care of. Um, 
uh, maybe having some dashboards in there, uh, like you know, uh, some tool like uh, uh, GitOps uh, from from ViewWorks. Uh, so visibility is something that's that's we are still struggling with. Uh, we want it like a one-stop shop where we could monitor the drift uh, in the cluster. I, I think it's worth mentioning a little bit. Uh, you know, would you consider that kind of our biggest pain point? One of our bigger pain points was 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 around what you just mentioned a little bit of visibility and things like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, because setting things up uh, with an amazing documentation there and the help from the community, like you know, was was straightforward. Like some of the talks. Uh, really help us uh, uh, put this all together. Uh, uh, however, like, you know, at the end of the day, when DevOps ask you, okay, give me that single pane of glass, like, you know, where do I see my my cluster? Uh, like, you know, okay, I see all the uh, events, like, you know, I see all the alerts on, on Slack, I see some dashboards, but like a, a, like a single pane of glass, that is something that, that we definitely um, have a have a big need for. We've used Grafana dashboards. We've also used Argo CD a UI to display our um, um, flux uh, workloads. Uh, however, we are not very satisfied with uh, any of the approaches that we are taking. So uh, I guess we have more room uh, to improve there. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. yeah. No, go, go, go ahead, Nita, sorry. No, no, I was going to just talk about more about the multi-tenancy uh, use. Yeah. In, 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 the, in the next slide. Uh, so essentially what's happening here is what we have, as, as Josh mentioned, like we have tenants of tenants. So we have like uh, different environments on our cluster and each of those environments have multiple tenants. And Flux lets us configure those really easily. Like, you know, up until we had Flux, our uh, tenant life cycle was managed by some workflow, like, you know, some workflow that one subsystem is doing something to that, yet another subsystem is doing something else and, and so on and so forth, and, 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 in, and it worked. However, it was not transparent. It was not something that we could track. It was not something that was easily understood across our different teams, right? So what Flux lets us do is like really having it traceable and trackable right there. So our tenant onboarding is nothing but creating a new folder on the repository. Uh, in in a, in a particular environment, uh, our tenant upgrades is going ahead and 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 uh, changing, adding, removing all of the manifests that are there for those tenants. And then our tenant on offboarding is something I love the most: is just going ahead and removing a customization from the tenant YAML and just going ahead and and deleting the folder if that tenant is not used across any of other uh, environments and in and, and, and clusters. So so pretty straightforward uh, uh, out there. What it also lets us do, like, you know, for, for, for tenant of tenants environments is we are highly customizing our um, subsystems YAML and we are using patches. Like, you know, it lets us define what namespace we want to put in, what our Helm releases are called, uh, whatever uh, uh, chart names are and so on and so forth. So it lets us do all of that uh, customizations on top of what we define our, on our subsystems configuration. And it's pretty, um, uh, visible. It's out there. We could see who made that change, what time that change made in, and if there is something that uh, really go wrong, we can always come back and, and revert it uh, by just uh, issuing another PR. So it, it, it works out really great for us. Yeah, and I, and I, I can't emphasize enough from the standpoint of, of, of the kind of problems that you know we're trying to solve and the way in which we're solving them on our platform through some of our um, customer specific workloads. Uh, um, they're really important for our platform, but a, a, as Nita mentioned, the way in which we were we were initially doing things uh, um, uh, was was fairly fragile, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and and it didn't necessarily support all of the kind of life cycle that we wanted to be able to do uh, in regards to uh, um, and, and in regards to how we want to deploy. Uh, we'll talk about it here in a short bit here, but you know. As you start kind of peeling back the onion of, of of things that it needs to be able to do, even things like you know being able to do like canary deploys uh, and, and, and and all those kind of things, just became uh, um, very very challenging. <laughs> uh, so for us, when we were looking through for various solutions, especially being a SaaS provider, right, and, and having what is probably considered a little bit of a relatively unique uh, architecture for some aspects of our platform uh, uh, that for the native support 
baked in right uh, to the underlying platform to kind of handle all these use cases that Nita was mentioning uh, uh, from onboarding to updates uh, to at the end of the day offboarding right uh, um, you know trial customers who go to production we we get rid of old stuff things like that right uh, 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 that it, it really just kind of seamlessly handled those in a, in a very very elegant way uh, um, and, and and it's going to make our platform overall a lot more uh, um, a lot more reliable, right? Uh, and more consistent experience when we're when we're doing our deployments, and, and, and even better so consistency of not doing customer specific deployments in one way and deploying everything else in a different way. To, to go yeah. back to this to this previous picture here we have here, we still have your traditional microservices. We got 150 plus growing, uh, you know, and, and new releases and that number's gonna grow. We're pretty early, uh, pretty new platform. So that's probably gonna increase a good bit. Uh, and those are what you would traditionally expect with normal deployments, like they're, they're shared services. Uh, but when we have these uh, tenant-based microservices, uh, 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 there is essentially a template, right, that we want to apply for every customer that says you get your own little versions of these guys uh, uh, in our key kind of data pipeline areas where we want to have more dials and knobs to avoid things like noisy neighbors and a lot of other stuff. But if you consider it, that means our deployments exponentially grow, right, in complexity as, as, as our platform grows. You have 500 customers, we're going to have 500 times 50 of these things, right? And, and to do these to do this kind of deployment in, in any way that has any fragility to it is just a huge amount of risk, right? So this, 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 for Flux, it's de-risking this whole process and allowing us to kind of get the benefits that we want to be able to get from being able to have the dials and knobs to kind of control our, our, our tenant pipelines, but without all the risk of all the challenges when it comes to deployment. So uh, I, I was I, I was pretty happy uh, when 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 Nita started doing a lot of her explorations, right, and, and started coming up, and it was like I said before, it was to start checking checking every box, right. Yep. Um, but um, but yeah, so uh, I think uh, um, so kind of really what's what's next for us right uh so uh we're 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 a little bit earlier uh in our journey in our journey uh so uh we've only partially rolled out uh this to our platform and we're going to continue to uh roll this out to to everything right uh and that's actually one of the benefits that we found uh, i think in, in general sometimes there's hesitations to take on new platforms that offer some value because you have I don't want to call this legacy because it, it, it was only alive for two or three months because, once again, this is kind of Greenfield, right? But you're kind of worried about, oh, I'm already doing this now. How much, you know, how much do I have to do a big, risky, massive switchover, right? One of the things that's been, that, that worked out well for us is that uh, 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 we're still doing some things the old way uh, uh, and we're doing some things a new way. And, and we've been able to successfully start incrementally changing this. And that, that's, that's important to kind of de-risk things, right? So we're going to continue to, 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 to roll this out to our entire platform. Uh, um, and, and also, you know, one of the things that uh, was important to us as well, once we got this foundational piece together, is that uh, like any other platform, you know, we wanted to explore different ways of our deployment strategy, right? Uh, um, like many organizations out there, we, we kind of use a mix and match of, you know, of kind of canary-like deploys and, and feature flags and a little bit of both, right, uh, depending on the use case. But there's a lot of complexity in doing like A-B deployments and feature flags and stuff like that. So we're, we're I'm, I'm not, not feature flag, but in, in A-B deployments, canary, canary deployments, all of that kind, right? Uh, uh, and especially considering our customer specific deployments, right? Think of it just, it gets exponentially more complex. And so we're going to start exploring a little bit more of, 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 of different ways that we can, you know, do and accomplish some of those, you know, some of those deployments, you know, especially around a flagger, right? Uh, and I think what, I think there was another talk today at flagger, or there will be, I think, I think there was a, it's on my it's on my backlog to, to, to probably morning. watch the recording. Yeah, it was early in the morning. So so uh, so we're looking forward to kind of exploring Flagger. Uh, um, I think we're also like everybody else. We know a lot of these platforms move quick, right? We know that there's uh, sometimes uh, uh, there there are improvements, sometimes there are fixes, sometimes there are security fixes. Uh, and, and it when you have something as important to this as it is to our platform, 
you're always hesitant to rev something. <laughs> you know, are we going to break something, right? Uh, or how do you do that? Or it's really complex, like it's a heavy lift, right? So you end up with, with, with environments that are just like versions and months and months out of date, right? So we don't necessarily want to get into that kind of pattern with this. So we're going to start exploring some of the, uh, uh, the Flux Auto update. Um, and and as, as Nita also mentioned, I think, you know, no platform is perfect. Uh, 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 we're very, very happy, right, with, with uh, our, our journey so far in, in Flux. Uh, one of the things is, we, you know, we have a worldwide distributed team. We have DevOps teams uh, around the world. Uh, and, and visibility and understanding uh, uh, the, the health, right, is really important to us. Uh, and, and, and like many enterprise organizations, we have requirements about, you know, how the tools and the administrative uh, consoles of these platforms uh, yep. uh, must have. And so maybe, maybe, maybe talk a little bit more about that, because I think that's worthy of talking about, because this is really important for everybody. Yep. Uh, and, and we, I think we came to a pretty good middle ground. There's room for improvement, but I think we got a pretty good middle ground. Maybe, maybe, maybe talk to that a little bit more would be, would be useful. Yeah, so yeah, so we're using Grafana dashboards uh, at the moment, uh, and we are using uh, Slack notifications. Um, obviously, like, you know, we would definitely need uh, advanced security, having like, you know, SSO uh, and, 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 and visibility as in terms of uh, doing the drift, like you see what's on your Git, Git repository, but then can you uh, say 100% that this is what the cluster uh, has it like, you know, because sometimes if you have failures, uh, and then if one of the hem releases is, is failing, how do you how do you 100% say that uh, this is not what you have on the uh, obviously Flux tried to to sync it, but something went wrong. Um, so we are definitely going to explore uh, some of the tools for that. So so that's kind of like really kind of our story, right? Uh, uh, a little bit of our 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 journey. Uh, uh, it's a relatively new journey for us, right? Uh, uh, and, and I think that's probably the last meaningful thing that, that I'll mention, and then maybe we could open it up for some, from some general questions uh, uh, and, and happy to go into some more details and uh, kind of more on the fireside chat. But I think our journey kind of started just a few months ago, right? So some of these, some of these systems you think, oh man, they, they've been doing this for months and, 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 they, and, and our teams have been exploring this you know, for, for, for months and months and it's a lot of effort. Uh, we've actually uh, accelerated kind of our our, our adoption of this whole platform pretty dang quickly. Uh, and we've been able to do so, uh, I think, because inherently, I think the platform has, uh, it, it, it is, is yep. easier to use. There's yeah, good, yeah, yeah. You understand the documents, uh, the help on, on Slack channel, active community, everything uh, um, is a huge, huge plus. Yeah. Yep. And I see Tamu here. That means our time's yes. up. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you actually talked for the whole time. Um, and yes, uh, there's a slight delay uh, from the video. So uh, as we've mentioned, uh, please post your questions in the Slack channel where we can continue to address them. Um, I know because of the YouTube stream, you could hit pause, you could watch it later. Um, we'll continue to have the stream up. And so we'll alert our fantastic speakers sharing their fantastic story um, if you um, roll in questions later. So uh, no rush at all. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of like look at my notes and just really highlight because your talk was so jam packed with amazing things, but I really love your emphasis on transparency um, and how um, Flux helped to bring that with um, multi tenancy. I love um, the onboarding and offboarding part of that. That's a really great way of sort of explaining how um, kind of streamlined it feels like that process got. Um, and then the um, earlier fragility and risk of deployments that seemed very helpful to sort of hear how, um, you know, that was something you wanted to address and um, hopefully your continued journey on uh, GitOps will help with that. Um, and um, yeah, I, I guess I was hearing for the first time too, the kind of the challenges of canary deployments that uh, is exciting to hear you continue to, to go on that path and it feels very essential and we're very excited to um, continue to work with you and, and hear about that. And then, yeah, you're re um, repeating of reliability and consistency. So you have all these different um, um, types of deployments, but having consistency across how they're all doing it. That's a great thing to emphasize. So thanks for being so organized is essentially what I'm saying. <laughs> it's a very uh, organized talk and to um, 
it's funny that you know you're like oh we're so early but it, it feels like i mean we chatted because we met in the slack channel and it was um, really great to um you know get to know people so it's great to say see how you really are accelerating your your path to GitOps. well thank you for having us uh, yes thank you for letting us share our story absolutely uh and it's so great to see you again and um we appreciate it very much thank we you. will see Bye. you again thank you